Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Norman. And my name is Callie. Callie's going to help me explain parathyroid anatomy and why parathyroid surgery can be so tricky. Callie works with us at the Norman Parathyroid Center, so those of you who become our patient will probably interact with her in some fashion. Interestingly, Callie is a past patient of ours too. We operated on her a few years ago for hyperparathyroidism. And nobody can find my scar. Callie has become such an advocate for patients with parathyroid tumors that she became a part of our team. Let's discuss parathyroid anatomy and why parathyroid surgery can be so tricky. Here's a model of a voice box, trachea, and thyroid. This sits in your neck right here. This is the larynx, the voice box. This is the Adam's apple right here. This is the windpipe, the trachea, and this is the thyroid gland. We all have a thyroid gland. It looks like a butterfly. It sits right here in the neck. The parathyroid glands are behind the thyroid, these little yellow spots. We have four of them. That's where they sit around, or para, the thyroid gland. So we all have a thyroid, we all have a trachea, the parathyroid glands, we all have four of them right there. Hyperparathyroidism is the disease that people get when one, or occasionally more than one, of their parathyroid glands grows in a tumor. For this demonstration, I will use some fruit and nuts to represent the parathyroid tumors. Normal parathyroid glands are the size of a grain of rice. We've got four of these guys behind the thyroid. When people develop hyperparathyroidism, or parathyroid disease, or parathyroid tumors, one, their grain of rice turns into a tumor the size of a nut or a grape, maybe even an olive. Most of the parathyroid tumors we take out are about the size of an, of an almond. Some are a little bit smaller, some are a little bit bigger. Occasionally, we'll get someone that's the size of even a golf ball. Remember, these tumors are not cancerous. Therefore, size is not the issue. These tumors are benign, but they make you sick and slowly destroy your body because they produce hormones in excess amounts. Don't let the small size fool you. It isn't about their size. It's about the parathyroid hormone they produce that is the problem. I'm going to tape an almond to the backside of the thyroid to represent a parathyroid tumor in a very typical, classic location. It sits like this in the neck, and there's the parathyroid tumor. So in a very simple fashion, to cure this disease, we make a small incision in the neck, open it up, expose this area, and remove the tumor. That cures the disease. The problem is that these parathyroid tumors aren't always right here. Sometimes they can be way up here, sometimes way down here. There's a whole big area where these things can be. So let's look at the x-ray, and I'll show you a little bit more about that. This is a Sestamibi scan. We use these scans to find parathyroid tumors. This is the shoulder and head of a patient. This is the heart, a little bit of the liver's over here. X-rays are always backwards, so this is the left side and the right side. These black spots up here are salivary glands. They're on everybody's x-ray underneath the jaw. This butterfly-looking uh, item here. That's the thyroid, as we discussed earlier. The thyroid looks like a butterfly, and there it is. And this patient's tumor is this little black spot right below there. So that's a left lower parathyroid tumor. Parathyroid tumors can be anywhere in this box. They're not all in the neck. They can be anywhere in this box. So even though we say parathyroid tumors are para or around the thyroid gland, and most of them are, some of them can be way up high, and some of them can be way down in the chest. That's what the importance of the sesamibi scan is to figure out where those tumors are located and where they're not located. Let's transfer this information on to Cali so I can show you in real life how big that box really is. If you recall, the thyroid gland sits right here, and most of the parathyroid glands are behind the thyroid gland. In reality, however, they can be as high as up here, as low as down here. So the parathyroid glands can be anywhere in this box. Most parathyroid tumors are in this area here. About 1% are up here, 3 or 4% here, and 1% way down here. Now you can see why traditional parathyroid surgery involves making a large incision. The surgeon will open the entire area of the neck 
to explore this large space for the parathyroid glands. There are a couple of problems, as we discussed. First, the parathyroid glands are only about the size of a grain of rice when they're normal, and most of the tumors are only, only about the size of an almond. So if a surgeon doesn't have a lot of experience doing this operation, these little guys can be very hard to find among the, all the nerves, arteries, and veins that are in the neck. This is why your endocrinologist will tell you to get the most experienced surgeon you can. You really don't want expo anybody exploring this much space in your neck. We're going to end this video right here. We have several more videos on this and closely related topics, one that takes up right here where we leave off, and I'm going to draw on Callie some more. Others explain how to perform mini parathyroid surgery in all patients, even if the scan is negative. There are some tricks that we have learned from doing this operation over 12,000 times that allows us to make a little incision to cure this disease in virtually 100% of patients.